we can take that shit. from our spawn at the car. If it hasn't been made apparent already by the intro or by the fact that I have uploaded two or three early access videos of this game, I am excited that Insurgency 2 was finally released. I was a huge fan of the original mod and spent ages playing it. Just as a pretext, I will be reviewing this game as a standalone game. I will not let comparisons to the original mod affect my opinion on the overall game, but I will make every effort to let you guys know how faithful or unfaithful it is to the original. I will look at this game objectively without my history of the mod intervening, but I will make no effort to suppress what is changed in between the two games. With that in mind, let's get started. How the fuck does he die? Insurgency is a tactical first-person shooter that is set in a modern Middle Eastern conflict. Much like its mod counterpart, players select roles and weapons at the beginning of each round and duke it out in tight, generally claustrophobic maps. The bloodbaths that ensue are, for the most part, visceral and twitched face. And to help players dismember one another, Insurgency allows players to modify their weapons between deaths. There's no ranking up or unlocks. You're granted full access to all armaments in the game and can load up as many attachments as your character can carry. Unfortunately, this leads me to my first and probably biggest complaint about the game. The weapons are all extremely similar in performance figures. In a game where a single well-played shot can put someone six feet under, you'd imagine that you'd need to pick a perfect weapon for each shot. But most weapons, with only one or two exceptions, will see uh, success by simply hosing an area with lead until you see a fine pink mist emerge from someone else's cranium. The weapons available to you also seem to lack punch, as they all sound like staple guns with 30 round magazines. I might just be spoiled by other games with fantastic sound design, like Battlefield 4 or Red Orchestra 2, but even the original mods seem to have more authentic sound effects. That's not to say that they aren't high quality, they're just lacking any real kick or sense of oomph. Still, they can give you a good occasional jump if you're not expecting it. Speaking of gunplay, you'll be spending lots of time aiming down your sights trying to shoot at mere pixels in the distance. Tiny enemies and instant deaths are about as tactile as this game gets. There's little incentive to work as a squad even though it's damn near required to, to succeed in a match. The cool part is that people seem to work together naturally. While the game is still really quick in its pacing, you have to force yourself to slow down to be successful. Think of America's Army and Counter-Strike coming together, if you will. Like a hybrid. Just watch and listen to some of the teamwork I came across. Hey, I know you're over there in that corner. I know you're in the corner, dude. Better fucking come out slow. Frag out, bitch. I don't think I can get to you, man. To further discourage running gun tactics, there's a steep penalty for dying. Some modes only let the teams respawn after completing objectives. If your team is sloppy and dies without capturing even one objective, the game will be over in just a few moments. Conversely, if both teams are even semi-able, matches can turn into ferocious stalemates that can only be resolved by ballsy players. One thing I think I should mention here is that the game actually includes offline bots and a cooperative AI type game mode. No, they're not nearly as competent as regular human players, but it's a wonderful tool uh, to help ease newcomers into the meat grinder. Plus, if you need to learn how to do something, it's better to do it on your own time and not in a populated server. It's a feature far too few FPS games have, and I sincerely am grateful that it was included in the game. 
Insurgency runs on the Portal 2 version of the Source Engine, and while it does look better than the mod, and most other Source games out there for that matter, it still looks old. Some maps are beautifully detailed, while others sport harsh, jagged geometry and flat textures. Animations aren't very lively, and the maps lack centerpieces. Each map looks similar to the next, and consequently many of the maps play out the same way. If this was a retail game at a full $60, I'd almost begin to call the Source Engine outdated, but for the $15 price tag and the benefit of performing well on low-end systems, I can forgive its shortcomings. To sum things up, Insurgency 2 is a mostly successful commercial conversion of its older self. It feels pretty similar to the mod and is being sold at a competitive price. A competitive price that other games like Counter-Strike Global Offensive also share. In the end, Insurgency isn't a game I'd recommend to just anybody. If you're looking for a return to the mod, then this may satisfy your needs, but does fall short in some respects. If you like Counter-Strike but find it too fast or not realistic enough, then this game may satisfy your needs as well. Don't expect realism of America's Army's proportions either. This game sits right on the fulcrum of arcade running gun and small-scale mill sim. If that sounds interesting to you, you've found another game that you might want to add to your collection. As a final note, this is one of the only games I've ever played through early access to release. The devs have drastically improved the game over that period and responded to community criticisms. I personally encourage this type of relationship between developers and their community, so I take comfort in the fact that I know issues and community grievances can almost be guaranteed to be resolved over time. With that in mind, I give Insurgency 2.0 a solid and respectable B- for an honorable but somewhat flawed return to the Source community.